How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to 2A News Now. And as always, here at 2A News Now, you get your Second Amendment news straightforward and to the point with no BS added in. According to the federal government, you're a violent extremist. You're a violent extremist. You're a violent extremist. You all are violent extremists. I believe it was last year that the Fed said if you had a Gadsden flag or any of that type of memorabilia, you could be a violent extremist. Now the feds are saying, if you're a Second Amendment supporter and you support gun rights, you could be a violent extremist. The term violent extremist isn't what it once was. It's hard to recognize such a term when it's used to describe people peacefully protesting, while it's not used for people burning down neighborhoods and calling for law enforcement to be defunded or eradicated. But a lot of people really don't follow that. They see the news and trust the journalists for some ungodly reason, or they trust the government when they tell them something. Those folks figure violent extremists are people who will use violent actions to potentially hurt or unalive people in pursuit of a cause that simply can't win in the legislatures. So if you find you're part of a group that's been lumped in with violent extremists, you might get a little pissed off. Prepared to be pissed off, ladies and gentlemen. As it seems, we humble gun rights supporters are akin to actual violent extremists, according to our wonderful federal government. Federal law enforcement lumped together conservative positions on guns and immigration with violent extremism in guidance given to financial institutions to help them monitor people's transactions. According to a congressional investigation, the House Judiciary Committee and its Weaponization Committee released a report on Wednesday detailing the efforts by federal agencies and large financial institutions to surveil Americans private financial transactions in the wake of the J6 protests. Soon after those protests, the FBI, the Department of Homeland Security, and the National Counterterrorism Center created an intelligence document called Domestic Violent Extremists Likely Embedded in Aftermath of the Capitol Breach. And listen to this, the FBI shared the file with financial institutions to help them profile potential domestic extremists. And it gets even worse. The FBI also sent the intelligence documents with other private companies with membership in the Domestic Security Alliance Council and FBI and DHS portal. And get this, it includes 650 large private companies. The FBI intelligence product, along with other materials shared, detailed the extent in which federal law enforcement derisively viewed American citizens. Federal law enforcement used a report and materials, like a two commandeer financial institutions databases, and asked the financial institutions to conduct sweeping searches of individuals not suspected of committing any crimes. The intelligence brief suggested that outside pressures prompting domestic violent extremists to engage in political violence, and here it is, including firearm legislation, the easing of immigration restrictions, and new limits on the use of public land. Basically, anyone who isn't on the left is some kind of a domestic terrorist. Well, heck, a number of people who are on the left likely qualify as well, because many of them are thrilled about illegal immigration or actually support gun rights. Yet the deeper problem here is that these are all legitimate issues that some people are going to feel differently about. Some people want total gun bans. And some of us want to be able to order an F-22 on Amazon. And I think most of us are in the Amazon camp. But most people fall somewhere in between. To say that people who oppose gun control are somehow akin to domestic terrorists is definitely a big problem. Particularly since we've seen plenty of violence from the other side of the aisle. Or has everyone forgotten the George You Know Who riots in 2020? We're all not thrilled to see the federal government trying to enlist our bank and credit card companies to help them deal with extremism, and then using a definition that may well lump a lot of people, most of us included, into that camp, all because we refuse to go along with Sleepy Joe's domestic agenda. And really, that is the definition, isn't it? All of those things are points the Biden administration has harped on, and that many people oppose. And those that do are violent extremists. Remember the old saying, elections have consequences. So remember this video. When you go to the ballot box in November, like I said, it used to be if you had a Gadsden flag or any of that type of memorabilia, you're a violent extremist or a domestic terrorist. And now it's just because you're a Second Amendment supporter 
and support gun rights. You're a violent extremist, but really what it is, it's their way or the highway. If you don't follow along what they say you should believe and what they say you should do, heck, and I might as well say it, if you're a Republican, you are a violent extremist. As always, I would really like to hear your thoughts about today's video in the comment section down below. And if you guys enjoyed today's video, and if you want to help the channel out and help it to continue to grow, please just take a few seconds of your time to like, share, and subscribe, and hit those post notifications. I would be very grateful. And I invite you to come on back and watch my next video.